Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's DIYs are for things to hold your florals. I don't know what else to call them. I don't I haven't figured out something that just like flows well and sounds nicely, but planter boxes slash vases, things for your florals or greenery, picks, whatever. Um, I'm going to be styling them all for the fall, but most of them can be interchanged for different seasons. You're gonna see what I mean when we get into it. One of them though is definitely exclusively fall. I mean, or not, you do you. But one of them I would say is exclusively fall. Um, but that is how I'm gonna be styling all of them. They are using Dollar Tree items, which makes them super budget friendly. And I'm really excited about how they came out. And let's get into the first one. All right, so I've got this galvanized bucket from the Dollar Tree. They have all different kinds, all different shapes and sizes. Um, different times of the year. Usually you can find one of some kind all throughout the year. And I just wanted to paint over the flowers and gardens because that was a little too spring and summery for me. So this way I can use it any time of year. So I'm giving it a coat of a white a Waverly chalk paint. At this point I was avoiding the top and bottom rim and the handles because I hadn't fully decided what I was doing with it. But I'll cover that in just a second. So bear with me. This is going to be a little funky for a little bit, but I've got a bunch of grays and browns and a black, and then I've also got a Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral, and we're going to go for a polka dot looking effect. Not really, but that's what it's going to look like right now. So I am dry, dry brushing with a stencil brush, a little stippling effect here of the various colors, and we're going to start from dark to light. And we're basically going to try to make this look like an old pail that has been around for a long time. So once I have all those colors polka dotted on, we're going to go over it with the mineral, which is like, well, you can see, it's like a nice beige color. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit more white and a little bit more brown and a little bit more gray and just going to kind of layer it, mixing it together not like fully blending it, but blending it just a little bit while the paint from the previous color is still wet. And we're just gonna go for an old bucket look. I do go around and do the rims and I do paint the handles as well. Um, like I said, I just wasn't sure at first what I was gonna do. If you're new here, I just wanted to introduce myself and say my name is Leanne and thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad you're here and I hope that you consider subscribing before you leave so you don't miss out on my future videos. I love sharing creative and budget-friendly DIYs with you. Now while that's drying, we're moving on to this wood cutout pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. It comes in like an eight pack and I'm just gonna fill in the hole with this little filler stuff that's also from Dollar Tree in like the tool section. And then I'm gonna give both sides of this pumpkin a coat in white paint. Um, I did both sides just so it looked a little bit finished from the back, but we're only gonna do this little accenting on the front. And I'm just using some of that brown paint and just kind of drawing in like the curves of the pumpkin to give it some dimension. I'm painting the stem. It's not perfect, it's just kind of like a rough, rustic thing, but I just wanted to add a little embellishment to this bucket. While the, buck, or while the pumpkin is drying, we're gonna go ahead and fill our bucket with some fall florals. I've got this hop bush and then some mini mums from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever you've got on hand. And if you want, you can stick some floral foam in the bottom that is a little bit easier. You maybe hot glue it to the bottom and then cut these picks apart but I'm just bending the stems and I'm gonna maneuver them together, but do whatever works for you. Um, there's really no right or wrong, just do what you want. It's your DIY, it's your project. And then I'm gonna hot glue a wooden skewer to the back of the pumpkin, and we're just gonna add this in the bucket for a little embellishment, rather than putting it on the bucket, because this way you can just switch it out and use that bucket any time of year, and I really love how this came out. I'm thinking I might be using it on my porch this fall. We'll see. By the way, sorry if you can hear my dishwasher in the background. It's kind of loud, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna take this mini jar for our next DIY. I picked it up on clearance at Hobby Lobby, along with some floral picks and this decorative filler from Dollar Tree. You could also use a little jar from Dollar Tree or just like a jam jar, something you have lying around the house. There really doesn't matter. I'm using a smaller one because I want it to possibly fit on my tiered tray. And I picked out the florals I'm using. I am wrapping the stems together with floral wire or floral tape rather, just to make it easier. But 
it's not necessary. And then I'm pulling out the little pine cones from the filler. And these do have glitter on them, um, even though it doesn't say that it's a seasonal thing, but they're kind of Christmassy. But Dollar Tree also has those uh, mini scented ones as well for fall, which would be perfect for this. So um, just filling the jar with the mini pine cones, sticking the florals in between, like just down in the middle, and wrapping the top with some jute twine. We're gonna tie a bow, burn off the edges with a lighter, and that is it. I do end up turning the bow around to the back because I decided I didn't want to see the little chalkboard label thing on the front of the jar. But um, yeah, I love how this came out. Super cute and easy. It's gonna be cute on my tiered tray. And you can of course put anything you want inside of it. So for this next one, we are going to build ourselves a little wooden box. I've got these square wooden planks from the Dollar Tree. They come in a six pack and we're gonna use five. If you cannot find them, which I get it, I've only seen them once and I snagged them and I haven't seen them since. Um, but you could also do this whole thing with tumbling tower blocks. But I wanted to use these planks since I found them. And I'm gonna use wood glue on the edges and then to stabilize it, I'm putting some hot glue kind of in the corners and pushing in some tumbling tower blocks. You could simply just do this and skip the wood glue if you wanted, although wood glue does tend to give a little bit of a stronger hold. Now beware that these um, pieces are not all like even or straight. Um, you know, they're Dollar Tree guys and they're wood, they're not perfect. But um, I'm gonna just do the best I can. And I did kind of forget at some point here which side was supposed to be the bottom, which doesn't really matter except for that I kind of got the tumbling tower blocks a little janky inside, which doesn't matter because nobody sees it. But if you wanted it to look like a little bit more of a finished piece, then just pay more attention to that. So we've got our box put together, but the corners just aren't quite even and lining up exactly right because like I said, these are not straight pieces. So I took some of the larger popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree and cut them down to size and used some wood glue and some hot glue. And we're just going to kind of finish up the corners here by putting one on either side of each corner. And it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. We are going to take it one step further to finish off these boxes. So this is optional, but we're gonna take more of that little filler. I can't remember what it's called. It's lightweight spackling maybe. I don't remember, but we're gonna just shove that into the um, little spaces here and it goes in really easy. It is a little bit crumbly, a little bit messy, but it's really not a big deal. Just push it into all of the spaces and then it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to dry, which really isn't that long. And this little step does make a huge difference, but feel free to skip this if you want. Once the spackling is dry, you're just going to lightly sand it to smooth out all of the edges or all of the surfaces. I guess they're not edges. Smooth it out. And now I'm going to paint it with some Waverly wax in the color antique. You just brush it on and then wipe it off with a paper towel. You could also water down some brown paint to get a similar stained look or you could just paint it solid with a color. It doesn't matter. It's your call. I'm making the base of this pretty neutral. We're going to add some embellishments to make it for the fall and to add some color. But for the base, personally for me, I just wanted it to be a basic wood box. I do go ahead and paint the bottom, but you don't have to, but I just wanted it to look finished, but I didn't paint the inside. So now I've got these wood cutouts. I picked the pumpkins and the leaves from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever ones you've got. They've got lots to choose from for the different seasons. I filled in the, the holes once again, and I'm giving them all a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And then once that dries, we're going to go in with a little bit of that brown paint very lightly, and we are going to, once again, paint on some dimension on our pumpkins. We're gonna give it some curves. We're gonna paint the stem, and then on the leaves, we're going to paint on some lines that would kind of be like where the veins of the leaf are, just to kind of give this a little bit more dimension, and I keep saying the word dimension, but also remember, we're going for rustic here. I mean, you don't have to. You can do a smoother finish if you want. I like rustic and farmhouse because it doesn't have to be perfect and I was really pleased with how these came out. These are going to be the things that you can switch out for each season so keep that in mind. Now I'm going to take some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and we are going to glue this around the center. I did not want to put glue the whole way around so I just put glue on each end but when I did the second end I just pulled it nice and tight so that it would not be shifting all over the place. And then I've got these Velcro dots. These are from the Dollar Tree. 
I've used them on other projects as well. And we're going to attach these to the box and the wood pieces. Now I do this two different ways, so I'm showing you the first one. They are very, very sticky. Um, so on the wood pieces, I didn't feel like they needed any glue, but on the part of it that's going on the box, I wanted it to be glued, not just to the ribbon, but to the box behind it so that when you pull these on and off, you're not pulling the ribbon away from the box. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to put hot glue on the side that goes on the box and I'm gonna press it down and hold it so that the hot glue goes through the ribbon onto the box. And these are so, so cute. Um, I'm looking forward to changing these up for the different seasons. Okay, to fill the box, I've got these floral picks from the Dollar Tree and then this wheat one I think is from Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure. I just already had it. Once again, I'm skipping the step of floral foam, but do what you want. How cute is that, guys? Oh my goodness, I love it, and I will be switching that out for Christmas. You can do ones that can be used all year round. So many options, I love it. For this next one, I've got one of these velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree, which are really cute if the colors work for you, but they don't for me, so I just got them because underneath that velvet is just a foam pumpkin, just a plain white foam pumpkin. The fabric is not glued on at all, and I am going to pull the stem off, although we're not using it. I'm going to save that for future pumpkins. Now, I'm painting mine in white paint, so it's not super noticeable. Um, but I want to do cover up the look of the styrofoam, so all of the little, like, grooves. Hindsight, if I had thought about it before I got going on this, I would have mixed the paint with some baking soda and done the textured look. I probably would have only needed one coat of paint this way. I'm just showing you little paintbrush handle to flip it over but um, I just wanting to give it enough coats so that you can't see the texture of the styrofoam because I don't want it to look like it's styrofoam once that's done I'm going in with the mineral paint mineral colored paint from Waverly and I'm just painting in each of the grooves and it doesn't have to be perfect pumpkins and their designs and shapes are not perfect not in real life but I'm just taking a thin paintbrush and going down each of the grooves. Now you can do obviously any color combo you want, but we're just gonna do that all the way around. So you might be able to see in the middle of the styrofoam pumpkin, there is kind of like a seam, like the halfway mark. And so don't worry, we are going to cover that up with some jute twine. So here I am burning it to, well, to try to burn off the fuzzies, but it kind of caught fire and just broke off, you know, like burned it right in half, so. Apparently that can happen. I think it was just a thinner piece. So trying again, I'm just pulling off a bunch. I didn't measure this. Burning off the fuzzies, you don't have to do that. Um, but I also like the color it gives the twine, like it gives some darker spots and I like that look. We're gonna do that and then just gonna wrap it around the center of the pumpkin. I'm not hot gluing it. I'm kind of doing a messy wrap, but also just making sure that it is actually covering up the seam because that's kind of the point. Also to add, you know, a little bit of extra texture to the pumpkin, little things like that, little details like that, make it like look a little less homemade. And then I'm just tying it in a simple knot. I'm not tying a bow or anything like that. And then we're gonna fill the top with florals. Now hot glue will melt the styrofoam, so don't go heavy on the hot glue. And I honestly only used it really here on the leaves and then for some pumpkins down the road. But um, I just hot glued it because I didn't want them totally sticking up. I didn't want it like flat curved around the pumpkin, but I didn't want them sticking straight up either. And I just pulled some leaves, some florals, some pine cones from my stash. But um, Dollar Tree has really great um, fall picks. So get them and feel free to like pull them apart and use all of the different pieces. And we're just gonna stuff this, stuff this pumpkin full, make it a little like flower holder and I just messed around. I did a lot of different things before I came up with something that I liked in the end, but do it your way with whatever florals and stuff that you have on hand and that you like. And here is how it came out. I love this. It's gonna look really cute on one of my shelves. And yeah, so many different things you can do with it. And I didn't hot glue most of it, so you can totally change it out if you change your mind. Okay, well that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button down below. That helps me out so much. And if you are new here, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I love sharing all things crafty DIY with you because that's what I like to do. So I like to share it with others. So I'd love it if you would consider sticking around and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.